Hey there, how are you? I'm fine. Is this Miss Johnny Walker? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, so how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, You know, just looking at all the bad stuff that's on social media and just, you know, just a lot. I can say that the climate is just different. Things are just, you know, different is is all I can say right now. Just got to watch our children and try to teach them the best we can and, and I don't know, just maybe a different way of how to manage certain situations because, you know, these guys aren't going to change overnight. It's not going to happen. So I, I'm, still trying to, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to grasp that. Grasp Jesus, it all. Jesus, right. Yeah, that, that was just crazy. And we yeah. were going to talk in regards to um, the council, the group that I created. And what it is, um, there are five gentlemen here that uh, play for uh, various entertainers around the country. Um, mm-hmm. Fun Function, Lakeside, Masters of Funk, Eric Benet, Angie Stone, Josh Stone. There are a lot of uh, major entertainers that these guys play for, and they all live here in Memphis. And mm. so one of the things that I said to them was, you know, it's obviously we have to uh, uh, do what we do to maintain ourselves, uh, to maintain our families, if you will. I said, but you mm-hmm. guys play for everybody around the country. Have you ever thought about playing for yourself? <laughs> and so so they were like um and I said to them the music industry um is so different now than what it was say 10 years ago or even when I was in it um it's it's nothing it, you know when I was in it it was how many albums that we sell or how many singles that we sell and how many you know how many spins that we're getting you know at respective radio stations today you know it's streaming because even the download business has been affected by streaming. You know, it's like, why would you pay 99 cents for a song when you can pay $9 and have millions of songs? <laughs> so, well, yeah, well, I mean, it, with, the, with the access, um, yeah, with the, with the access to it. So, yeah, and, and, you know, funny enough, just recently, um, not even a good three months ago, maybe two, two between two to three months ago, uh, digital downloading, uh, surpass CD sales. You know, yeah. cause we were looking, while I, while I was doing my degree, we were looking at um, the CD sales were falling and the digital downloads uh, were rising. So now, not even a good six or not even a year later, we're looking at the, the, the strong possibility of having to do just using a streaming uh, service and, and have access to, you know, to all these uh uh, songs uh, and and create your own station mm-hmm. and create your own uh, playlists and and all of that uh, and I'm like wow well, what, what's going to happen next <laughs> <laughs> well I think for the younger demographic they're already there they're they're already making the streaming um, uh, situation the, the 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 I would say the point of choice in terms mm-hmm. of having access to music. Um, and another, uh, to add to that, like I just bought a car about a month ago and there's no CD player in the car. And so I asked the deal, I cause I was in the car and I'm like, okay, so where's the CD player? And he says, you know, in the newer models, they're not putting CD players in the cars. It's, um, USB port, um, internet, Bluetooth, because most people that are purchasing the newer cars, they're just plugging mm-hmm. in their their iPads or their phones where their music is, or if you got internet, then you just go directly to uh, your favorite Pandora or streaming service, or you got Cirrus and you pick your channel that you want to listen to, and there it is. So it's not necessarily, you know, an output for CD players. So, you know, so many things are changing, but with the group that, uh, that we put together, we call the group the council. And we mm-hmm. call them the council simply because, like I said, they play for everybody. Here's an opportunity for you to play for yourself to say, let's create something. We want to, what we want to do here is create something that we can take to the market and see if we can't develop it and turn it into something that mm-hmm. I believe can be music magic. The, 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 the reason why we're doing this is 
if you look at the record companies now, nobody's doing artist development. The record companies want you to come pre-packaged, pre-ready, pre-whatever, and they want you to sign a crazy 360 deal or some kind of deal that mm-hmm. gives them the opportunity to tap into whatever revenue source that you might have. So what I'm saying to these gentlemen is let us, let's take an old idea and make it new again. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the way Barry Gordy did it. Not to say that we're trying to go back to 1965, but we can borrow some pages from 1965 Mm -hmm. because those artists that were on Motown, we'll just use them as an example, those artists, if they're still alive, they're working right now. They, Diana Ross can book a show right now. If, yeah. Even though most of say the temptations of the four tops or what have you may have passed on, but that brand is still relevant today. And that yes, is because is. of the artist development that Barry Gordy put into those artists to develop those artists and to develop that brand to make them who they are that still exists today. Now, mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. take an artist that has not had that kind of development, I mean, where are they? Can, can you tell me who was it, who was number one this time last year? We don't even know. We have to sit here and go to Wikipedia or something. I don't know. You know what I'm trying would, to say? I would, yeah, I would have we, to we don't know. Charts. I would have to look at the charts. I mean, you have I to look really, at the charts. It, I can't keep up. You can't keep up. So maybe, it's like with Sam, those. Maybe Sam Smith. I don't know. Maybe maybe <laughs> Sam Smith had it last year. You know. Um, what he, the key word, like you said, maybe. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe it was Sam Smith. We don't know. But 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 my point is there's not enough um uh th- there's not enough impact of any brand, artist brand so to speak, that we can immediately say that this is my favorite artist or this is my artist that was hot last year and that artist is still hot this year. Um Ooh. you know, if I if I if, when I was coming up, if I hear the Isley Brothers or Earth Wind and Fire or Shaka Khan or Rita Franklin Gladys Knight, I knew who those artists are. And I think that much of the artist development process that used to exist that does not exist today, um, could become a factor in in developing an act that could supersede all that's going on right now. Right now, it's just like a, a, a factory in, out. Hot, you're hot for the moment. We got you for the moment. You got a song now, boom, 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 in, out, in, out, keep it moving. And there's nothing being done to actually really, you know, I would say develop acts or even just develop mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. brand of acts. It's just they come and they go. That's why we don't know. I said, who was hot this time last year? Who was hot? Who had the number one record? Or who was so hot that you want to book them for a show? When, when um, I would say major events, mm-hmm. I'll use Tom Joyner Morning Cruise for an example. When he does that cruise, you know, he, they, they're not necessarily booking whoever got a hot song now. They are booking entertainers. And the entertainers <laughs> happen to be... Confunction and OJs and 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 Lakeside and Barkays and whoever I can mm-hmm. think of off the top of my head, Shaka Khan or Gladys Knight or somebody, because these artists have been trained to entertain, not necessarily sing a song. And even in singing the song, most of the time they're not singing the song. They went in and sang the song, but there's an electronic device <laughs> that fixes the song. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, <laughs> so, so then when they go before a live audience without that electronic device, they're, they're lost. They're, they're in trouble. trouble. They're, they're, in they're in trouble. trouble. So that's why they don't last. So you created a song, but you got a song that is not, I'm going to say in most cases, not that relevant to the consumer. It's just for the moment. It's a fad or a trend for the moment so it's not Mm -hmm. anything that the consumer can relate to and then if you do come out live you don't know how to connect with the consumer so there's no connection made so you just standing there singing whatever you're standing there doing and there is no connection made so the consumer leaves goes on with their life and you don't understand why you don't have a career (laughs) because we don't even know who you are what are you up there doing so 
we are with this group that we've created, the council. Like I said, they play for some of everybody. They've uh, interacted, had opportunities to perform in just a multitude of situations and been involved. They actually, they are actually musicians. They actually play. They actually write. They actually um, take it from the ground up. And I said, you know, it'll be a, a long process and maybe somewhat a tedious process, but I think it's the process that we need to look at going back to. And where Thomas felt that it was a reality show is because a lot of the stuff that we're doing is actually funny and we are recording it. And so <laughs> okay. that's where that came from and saying, you know, you know, he said, what you guys are doing, it's a reality show. And I said, well, you know, we haven't really looked at it in terms of it being a reality show, but we are recording the footage. And it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing what we're seeing. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it American Idol on steroids. Some of it because <laughs> some of them are good. Some of them are horrible. Some of them are the people that we uh bringing through our process, I'll say. Uh, it's like, really? Why? Uh, whereas you have people that come through the door that they some girls, they're absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. And I, I'm going to sit here and say, now that is a good looking woman. Give her the microphone mm. and she open her mouth. I'll be like, oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't judge the book by the cover, right? No, please don't judge the book by the cover. <laughs> So yeah. that's what we're doing. We're, 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 we're basically taking an old idea. I'm going to call the old idea the, the way Barry, you know, Barry Gordy, so, the artist did not hit the road until he was, until, it, it, until it was their time, yeah, until they were ready. Yeah, until they, so they were ready. We're, we're taking a couple of pages out of that book to, so, to so see is if we there, can create. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, okay, so I'm I'm just curious about the background of the guys. Well, like for example, the how how many guys is it? About five guys. Or, it is five so. guys. And, and um, um, quick background: um, Kirk Clayton, who is a um, band director, music director. He currently is music director for the Barcays, music director for Howard Hewitt, and music director for Confunction. And then a lot of times when the masters of funk, when all of the old school um, bands go out, he uh, performs as music director for those groups. Uh, Jonathan Richman is the music director for Eric Benet. He was music director for Angie Stone for the past 10 years. Um, wow. We have Jason Clark, who is the music director and current leader for the Tennessee Mass Choir. So they're gospel, but they're all over Tennessee, the state, the Dove, the Dove Awards, Stella Awards, all of that, uh, you know, from a gospel perspective. We have Marquis Walker, who is a six-time Dove and, and um, Emmy, not Emmy, I'm sorry, Stella Award winner for um, uh, production of various um, gospel albums. And we have Carlos Sargent who um, he's currently the drummer for the Barcays, but if you just pull out his discography, you will, he has played drums for some of the most notable, noted artists in the country. So he's a very uh, a well sought after drummer, uh, mm-hmm. percussionist for many, many um, artists around the country. So they are all, they bring different talents to the table but the main thing that they that they all bring to the table, number one, they all grew up in Memphis. They are all friends, and they all oh, okay. respect each other's work. So mm. it was real simple putting them together. <laughs> okay. I, that's where I was actually going to go with the question. Did mm-hmm. they kind of grow up together, or were they in school together? Or, you know, I was kind of going that, going there to find out. Yeah, you know, just like a background thing, and it was right. uh, a cool, uh, a cool project to actually come from that to what they're doing mm-hmm. now. You know, what we've so, um, uh, because mm-hmm. social media is so prevalent, you know, uh, prevalent in what we do. Um, we've created a hashtag called Homegrown Excellence. Now they all did not go to the same school together, but they all went to school here in Memphis. So they kind of sort of, you know, like grew up together, respect, you know, when they branched mm-hmm. out to get into music, they kind of 
came to respect each other's craft. So they kind of work together, if you will, say on different things here in Memphis, but professionally, you know, they all do different things, but they all grew up here. They all went to school here, went to different schools, uh, but nevertheless, they all went to school here, and they're all friends. Okay. All right. I mean, and is this something you're planning to air at some time? I mean, with the footage, or you you're creating a maybe a documentary? Or what was was the end game with the idea? I think that you know we might, but the real end game here is to recapture our music, to take our music back. The real end game here is can we can we take an artist? and mold and shape and develop that artist and release the music to the public, to the consumer, and see what level that we can take it to. That we can say, music is still music. We still believe that the fans like great music. They're just not getting any. You know? Okay. We believe okay. Yeah, well. they're, 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 it, when people are saying that the music industry is in trouble, I don't think the music industry is in trouble. What I think is the trouble is the record industry that controlled the music industry is different on that end now. But in terms of these guys that are making really great music, that hasn't changed. And I just think that the public, you're getting all this junk. You're getting the, the, the songs with the misogynistic lyrics or the oversexed songs or the uh, recycled beats. That's what you're getting. We're saying, what if the consumer was given real music, relevant songs? real real instruments would they accept it or would they reject it well that's a chance we're really willing to take we, 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 we're willing to create that and put it to the public and see if they will accept it well I think I think uh, for the most part they would you know I mean once mm-hmm. it's, it's done right and once uh, you know the, the technology I think uh, has offered so many uh, new avenues that uh, that an artist can actually take advantage of today um that makes it although it's still hard work but it does help make it a little bit easier you know um for yeah. the artist today uh to to actually go directly to a fan base or go directly to a target market uh i think i, I think uh with a good with a good um a good plan and a good presentation, I think it can work. You know, strategic, uh, strategically it should be able to work. I mean, people still want real music. I think people still want real music, and I think what many of the artists are faced with now is what you just said a minute ago, hard work. You know, the technology certainly has made it easier, but for a lot of these guys, it hadn't made it better because they think they can make a record and put it up on iTunes and be a star in the next day. <laughs> they, they, they have this microwave mentality that, you know, it just, I'm just, it's just not real. Um, I was um, senior vice president of Def Jam. I worked at that company for 15 years. And a lot of the, um, obviously, a lot of the systems that were in place during that time, many of them don't exist now, or the companies just don't operate in that fashion. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying to my guys, the five guys, the council, and what I'm saying to anybody, that will listen a, a a a a piece of technology may minimize some of the effort that you have to put into a project but work is work <laughs> steps are mm-hmm. steps you mm-hmm. still have to take each step to get to the top of the stairs now you can yeah. take the elevator you can take the elevator but you're going to miss all the steps and so when you get to the top you don't know what happened you don't really even know what the process was. All you know is you're standing up here at the top of the stairs. So if you're really serious about your career, you're really serious about this music, you're going to take each step, step by step by step. And that's what we're doing. Well, you know, I think I think I like how you put it in terms of, uh, yeah, you can take the elevator, but you, you, take you, the elevator. you, 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 you miss out, you miss out on, on what is there. And... Um, you know, I was talking to, um, just to, to piggyback on what you were mm-hmm. mentioning, I was talking to someone recently, and I'm from the the era, I, I think I'm kind of the similar era for where you you are or where okay. you're from. And um, we were talking about how, how long it took for a song to get released. 
And then I would, I would, I said, you know, I remember going to to one of the uh, couple of the state of the art studios in New York to record something, and I wouldn't hear that song. Well, first of all, that song had to make the record. That was that was the other thing because you worked on a lot of songs, but a lot right. of these songs didn't make the album. And then when if the song you worked on made the album, you know, you were looking at a span of maybe six to eight months before it, it either hit the shelves or you heard something on the radio where you can say, wow, I worked on this record right here. Right, um, right. But it, there was like a, like a long waiting period. And, um, you know, till today, now you can uh, finish mix your record today. And within a couple of days, you know, it's on, it's on iTunes and Spotify and, <laughs> and CD Baby. And, you know, it's a totally different thing. Um, I can send uh, uh, an email uh, with with a bio and some music. You know, back then we had to put that in the in the mail and you know put a cassette or a, a right. vinyl. We did we have CDs? Yeah, that you know, at one point you had CDs, but then um, you couldn't you couldn't create CDs or burn CDs at one point. So you you know we still were using cassettes to put in the package and mail it out and and hope for mm-hmm. the best. <laughs> now you now you can email a song, you know, you can email a movie, email a video, you know, it, it it's a totally a totally different world that we have right now. You know, you it's know. a totally different world and obviously that level of access has definitely made things very very different. But if there were one thing that I would say is like what you just described like you would be working on a record and you're going to put this record out and it would take so long see what the technology has done is taken all of that planning out because nobody does mm-hmm. that. And that's why, so I got a record, you got a record, Billy got a record, Wiley got a record, all of us got a record. <laughs> <laughs> and all of us going to send our record out, and all of us going to send a link out. And so here the poor person at the radio station or wherever they are, he got 25 links from 25 <laughs> different people, and he don't know one from the other. But we all sitting back ready to be a star. We all sitting back ready for our music to be heard. And the only thing that differentiates my song from your song is the URL address there on that link. And I, <laughs> there yeah, is nothing yeah. else. And so when you take all of that, like I said, I know it's tedious. And again, this is what I'm telling my guys. I know it's tedious. But we, in order for us to stand out front, then somebody got to walk out front and be out front you got to be different so if we're going to send a link like everybody else then we're going to have to expect the same results that everybody else is getting we have to do it different we have to be different Mm -hmm. and so that's why we're employing some of these old school tactics simply to be different you know like you just said you know back then you had to put your tape together you sent the bio you put all of that in a package so the guy got your package at least he you know he got your picture he looked mm-hmm. at it i hope we we hope he looked at it i'm only saying mm-hmm. that because everything is so easy now that i can create me an epk with my picture my song or whatever put it in a link and send it to you that's great that's easy that's simple but mm-hmm. you have to understand you're not the only person doing that. There's there's right. uh, uh, 100 other people doing it, plus, plus Sony, Arista, and all of the people with money that are doing it, too. So who do you think, whose link you think he going to click on? <laughs> uh, the, one with the, most, the one with the most prestige. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So you remain hidden in an email, in a link, and we still don't know who you are. So if you're going to utilize the technology, you should utilize the technology to your benefit and not rely mm-hmm. on it because you're going to do the same thing Beyonce doing. Well, Beyonce sent the link out. Oh, okay. Sure she yeah. did. <laughs> and she can send She can do that. When you send yeah. your link out, you're just lost in a whole mountain of links that's sitting on somebody's uh, inbox that they're not even bothering to click on. So it's almost like I would say, and, I, and if, that, if we want to try to look at the differences, mm-hmm. at least if your package was on my desk, I had the choice to pop it open and see what it was 
at least you can't afford me to look at it because I probably say, oh, there's another independent whatever, and it's not ready and tossing in the garbage can. But at least it, because it was sitting on my desk, taking up space on my desk, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I at least looked at it. A link, I don't have to click on that. Matter of fact, uh, I can select delete and never look at it because I'm trying to clear off all the email messages that I got. <laughs> so I just cleared that stuff out. So I, I don't even see. I don't. Uh, first of all, I don't know you. So when mm-hmm. you sent me, and here's the other thing that artists do, because I'm um, um, uh, three beats productions. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who three beats productions is. So what ends up happening is. Delete, 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 delete. So that's what I'm saying. The the technology is working against you and not Mm. for you. So it it, it is a time to use all of that, but not when you go right in the studio, create your record, put it on iTunes, put it in a link, and send it to www, whoever you send it to, and sit Mm. back and wait on the phone to ring. Your hair is going to be white while you're waiting on the Uh, phone to ring because it's not going to ring. Uh, so. No, it won't. <laughs> uh, no, it won't. No, it won't. But yeah, these are, I don't these think are anything. Good, uh, I don't think. I don't think anything takes the place of work, real work. Um, mm-hmm. You you just gonna have to roll your sleeves up and decide that you're willing to put the work in and take mm-hmm. the steps to make this happen and see the end result. If you're gonna rely on a link and technology. Well, hey, there's an exception to every rule. If it works for some, could work for you. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not going to work, but what I will say is that your chances of success are pretty minimal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, in reference to the council, what are they, um, I mean, it's an idea that you brought to the table for them, per se. What, what are they looking at, though? I mean, are they, is there sort of like a, uh, a goal that they have. I mean, they're just willing to be developed. And um, is it is it something where they're singing, or is it like a is, is it all instruments that the, the the council is doing? What what's the makeup of the music? Well, if you look at the term that we use, council, C O U N S E L. Council means to advise. Council means to nurture, to inform, to to educate. And that's what we are doing. They are all musicians, like I described to you earlier, and all the different things that they do. I have a record company background, 25 years. We're put, I have a young lady that's a part of the, our group that's a stylist. I have a young lady that's a part of our group that's a photojournalist, a video mastermind. What I've done is pulled several people, so it, it, while these five guys, the musicians, play a very significant role, what I've done is also brought in other people, or other specialists, I'll call them, to make up this group of, of uh, uh, to create this music that we're going to unleash to the public. So it's not just going to be a one thing. So the five guys that really are the face of the council, they, they, they're all here to, I'm going to say, advise to create music. See, we want to take an artist. We want to be Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, if that's a quicker way of saying it. Oh, we want to be okay. what Babyface was. It, it, okay. These are artists okay. that understand the business. We all understand the business. We all understand what it takes. We've all been consumed by the technology. But what we're saying is let's pool all of our talents together. Let's put everything together here, and let's take this artist, this art wouldn't there's no guarantees here ain't no guarantees in life at all you know free lunches so we're saying we're going to, well, we're going to take this artist and we're going to try if we take okay. this artist and put all of the elements that we all know behind this artist and we're going to take this artist to the public to our target market and see what happens so you know nobody is sitting here saying at the end of the day this is what this is our we have a goal but we know that if we don't reach that goal, let's go to goal. Let's go to goal number two, because we have four or five goals here. But the right. ultimate goal here is to create some great, relevant music that we hope the public will embrace. 
Okay, well, that, that clarifies it for me. I, I thought it was there actually were going to be a group, but now it's, I, I see what you mean. It's going to be more... Yeah, yeah, uh, no, they, they, are, they, yeah. they are a group, but they are mm-hmm. a group behind the group. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. they will be providing uh, things that they have learned within the field to, to nurture uh, a new talent or something, someone that's up and coming and sort of channel that you know, sort of invest their 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 knowledge and and experience into this group of artists or what have you, and then you guys take it to the world from there, pretty much. And absolutely, and 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 okay. and it, it doesn't have to be the up and coming artists now. It doesn't have to be the up and coming artists. Look, the record of the year this year was what Uptown Funk. Bruno Mars came to Memphis because mm-hmm. he wanted that funk. He wanted to create something that was that. Old school funk that nobody's doing now. So look, this guy now he gets all the Grammys, the uh, Record of the Year, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so we're saying it's right here that funk, that funk that everybody that was dancing to, having a, such a great time. That was when music was music, and we're saying these guys are right here now doing it right now. So if you are, I'll just pick somebody. If you are. Uh, Rihanna, can't think of nobody right now. <laughs> if you That's are right. Rihanna and you're looking for that gritty, that funk, that sound that's not in a beatbox, not in a drum machine, you're looking mm-hmm. for that original funk sound, then you might want to come here and our guys produce that record for you or produce that, I don't know, produce that song for you, if you will. So right. It's, right. It's, it, it could be the up-and-coming artist. It could be the old school artist. It could be the new mainstream artist. We're saying what we have here is a bevy of musicians that are immersed in that mm. funk Memphis sound, and they can create it with a snap of a finger. They can do okay. it for a new artist. They can do it for an old artist. They can do it for a, a mainstream artist. Just like Bruno Mars came mm-hmm. here for the funk, just like Melissa Etheridge just left here for the funk, just like John Mayer comes here for the funk, we're okay. saying we got the funk and we're going to take, but we're encapsuling it. It's not mm. any, we got, we, we got five guys that are experts in the funk and we're okay. putting it and they are the council and here okay. they are. So we can uh-huh. deliver you. You need styling. You need a video. You need somebody to tell you how to schedule, set up, and prepare your record or prepare what it is that you want to take to the market. We have all of that. And on top mm-hmm. of all of that, you got five guys over here that produce for some of the biggest names in the country can produce for you. And okay. that makes up the council. I like it. I like it. <laughs> So I mean, what? Okay, so you're doing this at this time. Is it something that you also have where the you know where the public can interact or see what's going on or what's really you just okay well, you you yeah what's the whole idea? well how we engage the public how we engage the public is we held auditions that's why I told you it was American Idol on steroids we <laughs> we we, okay. we we held auditions because one of the things I didn't want. Um, was each of these guys, I told you, five guys, work with everybody. And I'm sure they got mm-hmm. favorites. I'm sure they got people that they're working with. I said, in order for this to be successful, it can't be your artist, his artist. We have to have a generic artist. And it has to, we got to start from, a, from, a, like from the ground up. So in order for mm-hmm. us to do that, that's why we held the auditions. So by holding okay. the auditions, that gives the public an opportunity to come in and see what we're doing and, and present who they are and what they got to see if they can become a part of it. But it also caused a lot of the local media here to say, well, what are you guys doing? I mean, what is all of this for? And what, so we kind of have the opportunity to explain it as I've explained it to you. And so right. most people look at it as, wow, uh, if this is successful, this could be crazy. We've had people like Kirk Whalem, um, Eric Gales, guys that are like looking at us saying, hey, oh, oh, wait a minute, what you guys are doing, I mean, clearly it's going to take a little time, 
uh, clearly you got to put a little effort in, but what you guys are doing, oh, this this could be masterful. And and we totally believe that. I, you know, and I, and I and I said to them, you know, the thing about music is we don't know who gonna have the next the next big hit record. We don't know who gonna have the next true, big true. hit sound. Yeah. We 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 just don't know. We we don't have. That's the one thing we don't control. But if we create a record that has that funk, as I was just saying, and Kirk Whalem says, well, listen, let me come in and put a saxophone uh, uh, um, line in there, saxophone uh, uh, part in there. I mean, it's just things like, even with I Will Always Love You, it, as great as that song was, and Whitney Houston took it to heights that whatever, we all remember the Kirk Whalem saxophone. <laughs> it, <laughs> it totally stands out in that song when Kirk comes in. I mean, he ain't in there for but what, about 30 seconds? But it's a part in the song that totally delivers the song. And so what I'm saying to all of these guys, like a Kirk Whalem, any of them, we all have unique talents that we will bring to the table for this process. And I think those unique talents is what's going to make us stand aside. That's good. That is what's going to make us different. So if this group, the council, creates a record and we go to Kirk Whalem for uh, 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 phones, oh, and he's like, oh, of course. Because like, if you have people like that that see what we're doing, Eric Gales is like, anytime you need a guitar solo, let me know. So people, Eric Benet is like, how can I help? And so how can I help? So they see what we're doing. And they see okay. that we're doing it from the real. We're not, we don't just have a bunch of machines over here. Well, we got machines. Let me not, not say it incorrectly here. We got the same drum machines right. and programmers and Pro Tools. We got the same thing everybody else got. But we have something a little bit different. <laughs> we actually have yeah. a keyboard over there. We actually have a real piano over there. We actually have a real guitar. We actually have real trumpet players, saxophone players, trombone players. Mm -hmm. We actually have the real instruments that we're playing our band music is live. It's not pre-programmed. It's not pre you know, ta -ta 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 -ta. It's not that. It's an actual guy over there with a drum kit, uh, actually over there playing the drums. So I just think the whole live instrumentation of what we're doing, that alone sets us apart, totally sets us apart. So, okay, you know, we're just so going for it. Okay, so so have auditions started already? I mean, it's on the way already. I'm I'm assuming. Yes, we we held we held auditions June 22nd and 23rd. We we mm -hmm. planned to audition 30 people each day. We ended up auditioning about 60 65 people each day. So we doubled wow. what we had expected. Mm -hmm. Um Again, back to what I told you, American Idol on steroids. <laughs> but <laughs> but we're, where we are right now, we're still actually now going through the footage and going through the various people that auditioned to actually bring that down. So if you had like 120 people that came in and auditioned, then we can try to bring that down to maybe at least 20 to even go and see those people again, to bring it down to five, or to get a number. And we also, the other side of the coin is, a lot of people had not heard about it, or they heard about it, and they was taking a wait and see position, and then they mm -hmm. see what's happening, and now they want to know, you know, uh, will they have an opportunity to audition? And so we're going to do a second round of auditions, because there's a lot of people that want to be now that they see what it is now that they mm -hmm. see that it's not a gimmick that they see it's very real and you have for professional people here that are putting their skill sets on the table to develop this process now they want to be a part of it and we 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 are more than our arms are open our doors are open and we welcome them uh but we're going to go so, through this first group of mm -hmm. auditions before we announce a second round uh, and a quick question too: uh, Is the talent coming from different places of the country, around the country? Sorry, or is it? Are you sort of um, uh, focusing on Memphis at this time? 
Well, right now, looking at the resources that we have, we haven't. <laughs> it's basically coming from, I would say, the tri-state area. Mississippi, we got some Mississippi, we got some Arkansas, and we got some Tennessee. I think as the word spreads, like we're doing this interview here, and I think Thomas set up another interview for uh, one of um, the LMB counterparts that writes for various newspapers throughout the state of Tennessee. So I think once we do things like this and the word actually uh, is out there of what we're doing, then we will see uh, talent come from various other places. But for this initial start, it was right here in Memphis, and we okay. basically were able to impact musicians that are right here because our, our media was the local TV and the local radio. So we were able to attract people, say, in the tri-state area of right here. But via, you know, interviews and situations like this, we're able to reach a broader audience so that more people will see and hear what we're doing, which will, you know, give us the opportunity to attract, you know, a bigger group of people. Cool. So how, I mean, I, you, so you have, you have another round of uh, auditions coming up. How, yes. how would folks yes. get in, in contact with, with, with you or in contact with the council? Well, we have, um, 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 uh, what do you call it, a Facebook page. We, we do Facebook, and so it, it is called Council at Council Productions on Facebook. We're also Council Productions on uh, Twitter. Uh, we're utilizing, uh, for a website, we're utilizing Memphis Music Matters, which is a nonprofit organization here that we partnered with that you can, uh, you can contact the council um, uh, uh, via that website, but we found that right now that utilizing the Facebook page, uh, social media has has really helped in terms of people being able to you know, reach out to us and and contact us. So that's what we're using now. Uh, as this progress process develops, um, there will be a website. There will be other means of contact, but for now. Go to that Facebook page. We got our phone number there. We got our email address there. Everything is there. Info um, at the council uh, dot com. Everything is there on that Facebook page to mm -hmm. to to reach us if you're you know trying to get in touch with us. Just go to the council on Facebook, and it, all the contact information is there. Okay, so um, I know we spoke uh, some time ago, but um, I wanted to, to just. Uh, pick your brain on, on uh, a little bit on your background. You spoke about being okay. at, at Def Jam for a couple of many years. Mm -hmm. um, you were there when um, was it was it Russell around at that time or um, what 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 era of of time were you there at, at, at Def Jam? I was at Def Jam from 1989 to 2004. So I was there in the early years when, like I always say, like there was no money. I was there, um, you know, <laughs> yes, Russell was definitely there. Um, I was there, like I said, the early years. Um, for me, um, uh, I think I would say we took that um, uh, change. It was in 1996 uh, when Russell came to me and said, you know, with a company, we're, we're about to take the company to another level, and there are different things that he had in mind of growing the company. And he said, because I was living in Memphis at the time and wanted me to come to New York. And, and the vision was to, um, you know, have a, a field staff just like the major companies had to do a lot of things that the majors were doing that we weren't doing. And so he, he brought me into New York and I became the vice president of uh, promotions for the company. But with that process, we had to have a promotion staff. And so he gave me the opportunity to hire my own staff of people that uh, would have been would be my promotions team. So we put together that team pretty much like what I said about the council. Uh, the, the people that um, I hired in those early days had never worked records at, uh, they'd never worked for a record company. They'd, all of this was new for them. And I chose okay. to do that because I said, in this process of what we have, I don't have time to untrain people. I don't really, I don't have time for that. So we have to train people in our way of doing things, and that is how we're going to move forward. It was nervous because we didn't have people that knew the business. 
But one of the things that I was able to convince Russell was, okay, I've learned from you. I know this company, and I know what we need to do to take our records to the market. What I'm going to do is cut the top of my head off and pour it inside of them, cut their heads off too, and pour it mm-hmm. inside them. They are going to become me, but it's going to be six of them out there instead of just me by myself. But you got to let me do it my way. And the only thing I can say is I'm sure he was scared, but he took a chance. He took a chance in letting me do it my way. And I'm, I'm proud to say that we had the strongest, the tightest, most efficient uh, promotion staff in the country from 1997 to 2004. I mean, the only thing you actually heard on the radio was Def Jam Records. We, we ruled. And uh, yeah, uh, Def Jam was uh, yeah. Def, Jam, Def Jam was was the, was the place, you know. Oh, Everybody that was the place to be. To be. Uh, if you if was, you were an artist, especially a rap artist, and you was trying to get in the oh, you had to come across the you had to walk across the Def Jam terrain. But we were <laughs> very, I would say, very astute in mm. our execution. And, you know, the thing that everybody felt that we were going to fail was because I had all these young people that didn't know the business, but I had young people that were eager to learn. I had young people that were ready to to go out there and, and, and hit the road. And the funny thing about it, we were connected at the hip. We were connected, and we were just connected. And those young people, man, they would come. The thing I would always say that was different from us and other groups out there I never had to go on the road with them. I never had to go out there. And there were problems, obviously. We had to put fires out. But mm-hmm. it just never occurred for us the way that it did at other labels. Those guys, they took the information that I gave them, the knowledge that I poured inside them. They took it. They hit the ground running and executed like you wouldn't believe. Mm-hmm. And it was was an amazing, amazing time. And like I said, I was at the company for 15 years. Um, when Russell sold the company, just got it. So I'm, I'm going to be a philanthropist. Whatever he said he was going to do, he got out. Well, you know, things change. And you have new new leadership, and it's different. And, you know, I'd been there all those years, but a lot of things that I was doing, the new group of people didn't want to do it that way. They, it, it's just we clashed. So, you know, the handwriting was on the wall. <laughs> okay. kept, you know, so, it's, it's different. Things are different well, now. Russell is not here, and it's just different. It's so totally I left. It's a different thing, yeah. It was it, a totally it, different okay. thing. Okay, was, was Def Jam the only um, uh, label that you worked with, or was there another label that uh, you... Um, yes. I um, uh, Def Jam, I left Def Jam. I took off about, I'd say about six months. And uh, Steven Spielberg brought me to DreamWorks and hired me as head of black music for DreamWorks Records. So I had my vacation oh, that went was long. You. Okay. That yep. was you. All right. That was I'm me. kinda going back into my memory banks here. <laughs> okay, because I remember when DreamWorks started. When yep. DreamWorks started and um I think you guys had acquired George Michael at one point. Um I was there thing. yeah. When when um Bert Bacharach uh, uh, Ron Isley, Floor Tree, uh, those groups. Because when he started it, you know, he, he, I think he, I wasn't there when Spielberg started DreamWorks now. Um, but I came along um, as things were developing because, you know, he had the country acts, he had the, the, the uh, pop acts. I mean, he, you know, he, you know, he, I think Keith Urban was on that label first. Country artist Keith Urban was mm-hmm, on that label mm-hmm. first. Um, there were a lot of artists that uh, were on the DreamWorks label. Um, but, you know, yeah, we, I, was I was there for like cool, about though. four, mm-hmm, I was there for like I'm about four, ahead. four and a half years. And he okay. decided that he too wanted to get out. He's like, okay, this music thing is changing. It's not what it once was. And so he sold the company. He got out too. So for me, wow. yeah, it was like, okay. And I just, uh, everything was changing. Everything was so different now. Nobody was really, you know, the business just was not going the way that it was what I knew. And I just didn't really see a place for me. Um, 
I went to a couple of companies and everybody was, you know, everything was like the quick piece, you know, nobody, mm. it, it just, nobody was doing, doing music or working music the way I knew how to do it. And like I said, it just wasn't a place for me. So I got out myself. <laughs> got I out. see. And, I see. and, and um, uh, you know, so I, I guess you, you might have a book coming soon sometime. Uh, well, actually, a, a company in New York has been talking to me uh, about a book, okay. and I've sent them quite a bit of information. And, mm. you know, we're going to see how that is going to evolve. Um, but, you know, it's just in talks now. Uh, but, you know, I can, what I was telling them, um, my career, uh, I can take you from, uh, I would say, Kenny Rogers to Jay-Z because I mm. started out in country music. I was a country music DJ, the only black at the station that, you know, <laughs> country music. And the part about it, many people did know I was black, and that's another story within itself. But oh. I went from country music to R&B music to the record industry and took all of that and turned it into a career in local government because when I came to Memphis, I took the position of a music commissioner for the city of Memphis. And so it was like having that music background, but kind of finding a way to blend it in local government, which was hard. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because government and the music industry, boy, that's like fire and ice, <laughs> wow. oil and vinegar. <laughs> wow. But, you know. That's kind well, of when, like my... Whenever the... Uh, when, I'm just going to throw this in. Whenever the book mm -hmm. is ready, send me the link. I'm definitely going to purchase my copy. Um, there I'm you curious go. To know, uh, <laughs> I'm curious to know historically, um, you know, the backstories of, of a couple of um, projects and, and right. during certain years, you know, there's like little stories. I, I actually recently picked up uh, L.A. Reid's book. Um, so he had a lot of nice little nuggets in there. Um you know, so I, when I reflect on when certain albums came out or, or, or mm -hmm. a certain period mm -hmm. of time, then he'll give some stories there. So, you know, it was it was cool to, to learn what was actually happening behind the scenes while this thing was going on, you know. Um, yeah. so it, it, would be, it would be nice to, to know what was happening um, on, in your journey through the, um, through the industry. I was total uh, behind the scenes. Uh... I was definitely the behind the scenes lady. <laughs> I was like, okay. I'd, I've never been that person out front. Uh, just never even wanted to be. Uh, but, you know, you see a lot, a lot um, that happened. Uh, a lot of people whose careers, you know, and I, I think this is something that I like to, you know, I always say, you know, when you think about all the people whose careers that I've been behind, that I've helped, that I've been a part of that process. When I was out of the game and I'm trying to, because, you know, I got to take care of my family, I got to do what I got to do, that you reach out to these people and they don't reach back. And of all the people, of all the people, only one, only one that took time out to do what he could to help, and it was LL Cool J. Wow. No, no Jay Z, wow. no Montel Jordan, no. I can mm. name them all. I can name them all. L L Cool J. Mm. Wow. L L Cool J said, wow. "What do I need to do? Who do I need to call? Do I need to write a letter? Well, tell me what I need to do." Mm. And mm. that was is something I will never forget. That's, that that's a of all right of these, there. you know, of all these artists, only one is L L Cool J. Mm. L L Cool J. Well, you know, I put it in the book. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, put it in the book for the book. Um, definitely, uh, good, uh, you know, blessings and best wishes on uh, this new journey with the council. Um, I like the idea. Um, you know, definitely uh, keep us in the loop over here in terms of uh, the progress of how that's going. And we'll and, definitely um, do that. You know, we we look look out for. Um, Look for look look to see you on top. Well, I keep and the you crew. posted. Yeah, the crew. Yes, I will definitely keep crew. you posted. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank well, you much. Um, I appreciate this. Thank you for your time, and it was a pleasure uh, chatting with you. My pleasure as well. <laughs>